I want to take a few minutes and go over how to set up timing and exactly how a four cycle engine works. This is a hit and miss engine. This is an old, uh, this is an associated air cooled uh, chore boy. Um, but I just want to go over some of the parts and I, I know a lot of people, this, this will work with any uh, hit and miss engine or just about well, any four cycle engine. But, but these are good because everything is open. All the mechanics are on the outside. So you can actually see what's going on here. So some of this may be very elementary to some people and other people it's exactly what they need. Uh, you got two valves. This is an exhaust valve which is operated by the rocker arm that runs off the cam. This is an atmospheric intake valve. Suction of the piston is what draws this open and pulls the gas into the cylinder for the charge. This is your igniter and when it trips you get electrical current, will create a spark inside the cylinder and fires the gas and air mixture. So we'll kind of go over what's what happens, uh, what goes on with these engines and, and your the basics of how to set them up to start with. So you set your timing up. If you don't have any timing marks and you had your engine apart, you put it together, you, you think it's about right. So what you want to look for right now is both valves are completely closed. No pressure on your exhaust. Of course your intake's not drawn in. So you're gonna roll this over until this igniter trips. Right there. A spark was just created and it would fire the gas air mixture in the cylinder and the explosion drives the piston down. That's your power stroke. So as this is coming down, visualize the power is pushing this piston back. Power, 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 power. Now when it gets to the end, you have all these unburnt exhaust gases in the cylinder still. You got to get it out. You got to get rid of it. So when you get down here to the bottom or close to the bottom of your power stroke, you'll notice your exhaust valve just starts to crack open. So as this push rod pushes up, it opens your exhaust valve. Now your piston is pushing up. It's pushing your exhaust gases out the exhaust valve and out the muffler. So when it gets back to the top, now you want all the pressure off of this exhaust valve. It needs to be completely closed. Then when your piston starts back down again, that's your suction stroke. And the suction will draw in this intake valve and sucks gas, a fresh gas air mixture into the cylinder. So now this is your intake, intake, intake all the way back. Your igniter just tripped. It's getting ready to trip for the next uh, cycle. So now that you're at the bottom here, you've drawn in all the fuel air mixture that you can. Now the piston starts back up. This is your compression stroke. You have to compress that fuel and air mixture to get power. So as it comes up, this is your compression stroke. This is when you feel resistance on your flywheels. Like I said, both of your valves are closed. Everything should be a closed cylinder and you're compressing that. As it comes all the way up, you notice your igniter tripped. Pow! So there's your power. So this drives back down. So that's cycle one. Cycle two is pushing the piston up, getting rid of the exhaust gas. Cycle three, sucking back down, sucking in your gas mixture. Cycle four is pushing back up on compression until it fires. Thus, four cycle engine. That's what's going on mechanically. Now, I'm going to show you how I check. The timing is when all this occurs into, in relation to each other and the position of your crankshaft. So I'll show you that. There's a lot of different ways that you can figure out your timing. Number one, before you take it apart, see if someone's made some timing marks on your cam gear and your um, crankshaft gear. And those marks very well could be correct. It's something to start with anyway. But how I check mine, you can make one of these up. Is I get an angle protractor, as you can see. Now you need to get one that's got 
a 0 to 90 scale and then when you flip it the other way it still reads 0 to 90 in degrees you can pick these up at Lowe's um, Menards Home Depot anywhere and it's for like finding rafters on uh, angles on rafters or table saw settings whatever what I did is I took a piece of angle iron mounted it to that made sure it was a square put a u-bolt through it now you can clamp this onto your crankshaft of any engine you're working on the trick is what you have to do is you have to find out exactly where either top dead center or bottom dead center is it has to be at its maximum throw either the top or the bottom it doesn't really matter and then once you find that exact point you slide this onto your crankshaft tighten your bolts down and align that to zero align this to zero so that you know this is exactly at the bottom or at the top so once you get that set, uh, and I'll set this up, and then I'll show you how I use that to determine how many degrees before top dead center that my igniter fires, how many degrees before bottom dead center that my exhaust valve opens, how many degrees before top that my exhaust valve closes, and that'll get your timing right. Okay, we got it all uh, set up to bottom dead center. Got my gauge put on at zero. And now I'm going to roll it around just until my igniter trips. The second it trips, I'm stopping. And then we're going to look at the gauge and see how many degrees before top dead center that that igniter fires. So we're coming up on compression here. And as you can see, I got this clamped right here in the crankshaft, and it's zeroed out to the throw of my crank. And we're bringing it up on the igniter. Let me get it down here where I can do it real slow. Right there. It just fired. Now, let's see. If you can see our gauge... You're at 10 degrees. So that crank is 10 degrees before top dead center. Which is just about right. See the white mark there is at 10. So now let's see where we're at when the exhaust valve starts to open. Sorry about that. Let me scoot you over here. So this is your power stroke. So now your power stroke's coming down, 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 down. Before it gets to the bottom, your exhaust valve needs to just start to open. So what you want to feel for is this, let me go here to the other side, this play. So we're going to roll this around just until that play is gone and you see your exhaust valve just just start to move inward to break the seat. So we're going to leave that there, which it did. And now let's see. Now my gauge is going to be upside down, but that's why it's good to get a gauge that reads both ways. So you're at about 35 degrees, 36 degrees before bottom dead center. You can see the crank there. You're about 36 degrees before bottom dead center, and that exhaust valve just started to crack open. Which, that's, that's fine. Now what we gotta do is roll it around through the exhaust valve, or I mean, I'm sorry, through the uh, exhaust cycle. Your piston's coming back up and it's pushing your exhaust gases out until you just get slack on this exhaust valve rocker. So as soon as you get slack on that, that means that exhaust valve is fully closed. All 
right there. So now we're going to set it there. And let's see where we're at now. Twenty degrees. So now your exhaust valve closed at twenty degrees before top dead center. So everything is closed. Now you'll start your suction stroke. Suction, suction, suction. Your igniter just reset. You'll come up on compression. Until it trips. Right there. And you're back at 10 degrees. Typically, most igniter fired engines, you're good anywhere 10 to 15 degrees before top dead center. Uh, you want it to run slower, you can get it closer to top dead center. Uh, you'll have less power, but you'll slow it down because you're losing power. But um, if you want run one to run as close to the way they were meant to run, eight. 8 to 12 degrees anywhere in that range you'll be fine before top dead center on your igniter firing 20 to 30 degrees bottom dead center to open your exhaust valve 20 to 30 degrees somewhere in that range to close your exhaust valve on top dead center that's that's not that critical uh, but if you cannot get this if you roll this around, you get it set at zero, and your igniter is firing at, say, five degrees after top dead center. That's way too late. So you'll need to disconnect your cam gear, move it one tooth one way or the other, try it again. But that way you can tell exactly where you're at. Hope it helps. That's just how I do it. I'm sure there's hundreds of other ways. But uh, that's, that's how I set mine up. I, I get them close. And then I fine tune it with that gauge. It works great every time.